Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computers 2K Now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Amnon, your host for the next couple of hours, along with Spence. Hello, Good everybody. Morning. And if I, if, I knew, if I knew everyone's name, I'd say it right now. But yeah, I know. It's hard. It's and Gal is together. here, too. Morning. Good morning. Uh, Nick is going to join us. Shortly, hopefully, his internet is out. Out for what? Out for lunch? Out for lunch. Out for out breakfast. Out for repair. Out for repairs. Our number is 919-518-97. It's what? <laughs> it just lost its marbles. <laughs> Our He's, number. Nick, Nick, is, Nick is out in the street chasing the marble all around the street, right? Our number is 919-518-9773. Computer 2K Voice on Skype. And today's, today's show is made possible by vMix Software, Telestream's Wirecast Software, and is sponsored by Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming Gear. Okay, I finally got that out of the way. <laughs> I think uh, he lost his token, actually, and he's trying to find it. Sorry. Remember Token Networks? Oh, yeah, Token Ring. Yes, token sir. Ring. First wow. network I had, first network I had in my house was a Token Ring network. With a Mao passive <laughs> around land testing. Yeah, a Mao. Wow. wow. Yep. That's before La Mao. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, I had an interesting situation last week with our TV. Um, got up in the morning. Our, with our TV? With our TV. Oh, I thought you said our TV, like you were, you were using it to I, seal something and it got messed up. I, I, I was looking at it from the kitchen. So it's kind of far and it's an angle to the window. And Right down where the captions are, part of the captions are like somebody is shining a flashlight on it. And uh, yeah, I didn't pay attention. So I, I went back and it's always stayed in the same place. And I looked, I went, when I went in the living room, I put my hand kind of like on different areas to see if I can shade it. And I couldn't shade it. So I realized it's coming from the TV. Uh -oh. um, whenever the picture will turn dark, it'll go away. And whenever the picture is light, like as in case of the captions, the letters, there is the, there was like a, maybe a mm, four or five inch round spot. So I went, I started looking online, and sure enough, uh, that happens to backlit LED backlit TVs. What happens is, I, did, I never knew how that thing is working. Apparently, there are, there's not that many uh, LEDs behind the screen. I think there's like maybe about 10 by 5, so maybe 50 of them. And each one has a lens glued to the hole in the frame, which diffuses the light. 
and they were showing how those things will fall off. Um, they, 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 I saw some on, on YouTube that had six of those r round spots in different places, but they were perfect round and everything. So that, that guy picked up the TV and it turned it from side to side, and you can hear like there are rocks inside. <laughs> Pieces falling out. Yeah. <laughs> So I Great. said, okay, that's what happened. Eh, never mind. You know, I'm not going to fix it now. I'm just going to get it's time to get another TV. So we, we got another TV. And when I took it down, I tried it. And sure enough, there is like, there is a rock in there. The thing is you can fix it. It, it involves opening the whole TV, taking out the screen Ooh. and getting to the back of it, which on, on YouTube, I mean, it didn't sound, it didn't look like so difficult but there's a lot of screws and he took it off and the opened fastest it. fastest way is to just lay the tv up on its side and, and find a place it, cut it down the middle on a bandsaw <laughs> no how about the, what was separated it? into two flat halves now what what was it. what was that game that you had with balls in it that you had to kind of like move it oh and... yeah yeah with the two knobs <laughs> and no no knobs, knobs no and... knobs no knobs you had to get the ball all the way to the middle, and there was like a maze, and you were supposed yeah. to move it. And so you can put you can put the TV on the table and just move it until that <laughs> lens goes into place. But no, it's a small. It's the size of maybe a nickel. Yeah. And it, when he opened it, he actually uh, tried to pry some other ones off because he say if this starts, you know, it's going to happen. So let's see. And he got quite a few more to just pop out real easy. And then you, uh, they say not to use crazy glue because it dries out and whatever he was using, uh, um, what you call it, the, the, the stuff that you mix together. Um, epoxy. Epoxy. And glued it and put it all back together and everything is fine. So you can, you can fix it. And I'm going to do it. I mean, just for the fun, I'm going to, one day I'm going to, clear the kitchen table, put a blanket there and put it on and open it. Did you get a bigger TV to replace it? Yeah. Yeah. I talked okay. with, uh, with Gal and ended up getting a bigger, cheaper TV. I yes. got it. The TCL 55 instead of this one. Now, let me tell you something interesting. The Samsung, apparently there are differences in how you measure these. The yeah, same the diagonal, yeah, the di the way, yeah, they they have the ones that are say actual and the what, what's the term they use? Class, yeah, like fifty five yeah. inch class. So which the just one means sort of kind of close. the one we had, the Samsung was actually forty two and a little bit inches side to side of the screen. This what was one, a diagonal that was like a 47 I, I or a 50 no, inch it diagonal. was, I think it was 49 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. This one, I mean, the only reason that that we realize it's it's not really the same way is because when we centered it on top of the mantle, I was measuring the mantle to see how much to move it here and here. And Kathy, Kathy said, What do you mean it's 49 inches across? I thought it was 55. And I said, oh, yeah. And I was measuring edge to edge, not, not the screen itself, not the, else, not the display, but the edge, like including the bezel. And then we measured it diagonally. It was 55. Yeah, so it's, always it's, it's what? It's always the diagonal measurement. Not in the same sound. The same sound no. diagonally was like 47. 48. So you had a 40 something. No, no, it's a 42. A 50 inch. It's a 42. It's I definitely know. a 42. And it was perfect 42 side to side. That's what I thought that it was that they changed it. And in, in the uh, LED, the LCD TVs, the flat screens, they started measuring it side to side. No, CRTs were that way as well. No, CRTs were diagonal. Always. Yeah, and LCD as well? Well, uh, obviously not this. This is, I mean, you can tell by the, by the uh, uh, model number also. It has a 42 in it. This one has a 55 in it. But it's not that much bigger, and that's why, because the old one was uh, 
And the, and and this one does say when I when Kathy went and looked at the box, it says diagonally measured. I I don't remember. What was diagonal? I don't know. Well, try and t- take take a look. I mean, some of them are side to side, actually edge to edge. It's it was interesting. But um, yeah, so it's bigger, but uh, it's it's not it's not overbear. I mean. We're looking to get a bigger one, but it just won't fit. It just won't be right for the room. This one was was right. The last one I bought was a Vizio. Mm -hmm. And I I never had a positive or negative opinion about Vizio. I just never had one. And I know people that had them. Some people loved them. Some people thought they weren't so good. And I bought one specifically to fit into... Remember how we used to have the old 36 inch CRT TVs? Yeah. And it had a specific, what was it, a four by five shaped opening that would fit the, the, you know, the dimensions of the screen. I had one of those wall units. I still have it. So what I did was I found a screen that a a TV that would fit inside that width. Okay. And I built a shelf underneath it. So I made it a built in. Here I'm thinking, this is a genius. It looks great. It looks like it's built into the into the unit. Mm-hmm. I cut holes in the shelf in the bottom so the speakers could find their way out and all that. And then I realized that there's no tilt to it. It's flat. So when the lights are on, if we're sitting on the couch and the two side lamps are on, I see the one that Pam, the lamp next to Pam, and Pam sees the lamp next to me right in the middle of the screen. So that was the thing I said. I didn't think of it. I didn't think of it. So now I'm waiting for this TV to croak. And we're going to have to just, we'll come up with a new, we're going to get a new bigger TV, obviously. And we're going to have to come up with new furniture. We just move that thing upstairs. No, yeah. But, it, you know, it's just, uh, the prices are just unbelievable. You can go to Walmart and get a, a 4K 55-inch TV in the $300 range. Actually, this was below 300 It was two two seventy nine at BJ's. 4K? 4K. Amazing. Yep. 4K Even if you just... with HDR and all, you know, all the bells and whistles. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. But let me and... tell you something. Let me tell you something. We were, we were in the aisle looking, and I was reading a little bit about the TCL, and some people said that it, it wasn't as bright as the Samsung. It's, uh, the picture was not as good. And you stand in the aisle, and you see the difference. The all the TCLs were like washed out more. I mean, you could tell that they were washed out compared to the other ones there. And I said, "There's no way." So when we came home, sure enough, it was washed out. But adjusting it, it went. Yeah, exactly. It's normal. That's what I remember back in the day when these TVs first came out. That there was a whole. You would have to hire somebody. We would have somebody hire them to come in and set it up for you because it was so complicated. Nobody really understood what the settings did and mm. saturation and you. Now, it wasn't just simple adjustments. It was a whole procedure that you would have to do to adjust it. And you're right. Brightness, it, it's just the way it is default. You can yeah. adjust it brighter. Yeah, the, by, the, by default, it was yeah. kind of washed out. But, and you can select different modes. Yep. Cinema mode and, you know, these different things and adjusts it for the room darkness and all that. Some of them have the self-adjusting for the room darkness now. That's amazing. That's standard. It's not a you know, high-end feature anymore. Yeah. And then yeah. The, I had, I asked Gal to come over to configure the remote, the remotes. Because well, this one is a Roku TV. So when I opened it, oh boy, it's the same remote as the one that we have for the Roku Ultra. So maybe now we can have two remotes. Well, it's not exactly the same. You, did you try pairing it? Oh, yeah. Well, no. Wait a second. Gal no, no, we did working. pair. Was there a pairing? We did pair, but that wasn't the, the problem was 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 overly complex so he has a sound bar and that's controlled via infrared it is not it does not have an hdmi connection which would make 
it's controllable by the TV. And so the Roku Ultra comes with this smart um, uh, uh, remote that can be programmed for other infrared commands as well. And so then you can control the Roku and let's say a TV. But it can only do one additional device. And so we wanted the, the, uh, the remote to control the volume from the sound bar. Um, pairing it to the TV, the TV doesn't have the functionality to program the remote. And so something about the, the version of the software not supporting it or something like that. So eventually he has a Roku TV, but he's still using the Roku box because that provides him the additional functionality right now. Yeah, I, mean, I I went ahead and I I ordered another remote. Uh, remote. Okay. The same one, the the original official one. We still need to solve the uh, on off of your TV via yeah. that remote. So yeah, uh, it's whatever it's we're fine. whatever whatever we're, we're doing there. It's like something needs to give. I just don't know what. I mean, the on off is really not a big problem because we don't turn it on off on off on off. i mean you turn it on in the morning you turn it off at night it stays on yeah. all day so it's no big deal it's fine it and is. i notice it has a really really nice uh, screen saver so uh i didn't what you when mean? you leave it yeah the 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 roku box like oh a, yeah the aquarium. roku box yeah yeah it has like different ones so yeah <laughs> So it can stay on. No, but the thing Don't is, it stays on because Kathy's in the room. I'm in the room. I mean, we're home all day. So it's, yeah. it, it never gets to the screensaver. It's, it's only at night. If it, because you turn off the TV, but you don't turn off the Roku box. And the Roku box stays on. And in the morning, when you turn the TV on, there is the screensaver. So it's, that's how it, but yeah, it's, there is. There is no way to turn it off. Yeah, there is. If you, well, you, I mean, well, you shut it down, but it's yeah. still, it's still on. Actually, there is a yeah. function in the Roku box in the settings that they call um, bandwidth saver or something like that, and they said that it's so when you turn it off, when you don't watch, it doesn't use bandwidth, so it actually shuts itself off after four hours or something like that. It's not an. It's not like a button. Not that I know of, or maybe there is a button, but I never looked into it. But the it's, Fire it's, Stick has a has an off button, and if you have a TV that complies with the new over HDMI power control, yeah, CC, yeah. it'll yeah, it'll turn it turn the TV off. I had I bought the the TV I bought thirty two and sorry seventy nine bucks I paid for the television, but it has this the standard so the uh, Amazon. Fire Stick I have connected to that it takes a while to start up. The TV comes right on, but the Fire Stick takes. So wait older, a second. Uh, wait, got it. it goes, it's ask. off. Got it. Yeah. So if I change the sound bar to and get one that has HDMI in it, then then everything should work with the same remote. Because I was in that case. I mean, I I. You well, won't even need the Roku Ultra. The, I can I can use the sound bar in the in the bedroom because in the bedroom I have a, a PC speaker set with the subwoof or whatever, but it's a sub all what? over the place, kind of. A sub what? Sub what? A sub what? A woofer. <laughs> woofer. Woof. 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 Woofer. So yeah, I can hang this Woofer. one up there, and uh, I'll think about it. But I uh, so uh, anyway. So God came yesterday, and and a few weeks ago, God gave me a, a harmony Logitech remote. Harmony. Yeah, and an old and, one. Yeah, and he said this will work on anything. So. Gal was trying to get it working, and that was a fiasco too because it was old and the program. No, and we got that. it working. Yeah, we got we're it just... working. Now you see, when you left, you said, 
yeah, you just, you know, you just you have to understand. I said, yeah, I know. You understand. I, I could not. You played with it? I played with it. I couldn't do it. And I said, okay, now let me see. How do I, how do I go up and down? And one time it'll work. The next time it will not work. And I said, darn, dang it, what's going on? So I went and I looked at the help and went and I said, yeah, okay, yes, yes, yes. And it'll work. And I could go up and down, but I could, it, it, I mean, I was sitting there getting frustrated. And I said, oh, well, if I guess you have to get used to something like this. It's not, you, you're getting yeah. used to a simple remote. And now here comes this that's got buttons coming out the wazoo. And what, 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 you know, where, where is it? Where's the volume? You know, and then I found the volume in the middle there kind of. <laughs> So it was it was interesting. I told you it's a frustrating start. Uh, it's I fine. tried to I know, warn you. I know you did. <laughs> you did. You actually you definitely did. But it was amazing. I've never seen one of those. I mean, you know, you think about a a, a, a remote and you just configure it according to the uh, you 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 use just the remote in order to configure it to the TV. No, this yeah. one has to be hooked to a PC and do it from the pc app and, and it, uh, wow but how quaint everything can be it looks like everything and anything can be configured into it through the pc i mean you you just yeah. need to tell it what is this what do you want this button to do anything that can be controlled with yeah. infrared yeah it's uh, it, god it i wanted is. to ask you do you want my, i i still have my first generation uh logitech what is it called again? The universal remote? Har Harmony. 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 I still have my original one. They replaced it for me because the battery swelled up. Okay. It's, it hasn't been used. Do you want it? It's old. They replaced uh, I mean, Go ahead. No, I mean, maybe for Amnon. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it should still work. I, mean, I want I, something that is simple. This is not simple. Okay, I'm <laughs> sorry. You mean they replaced it because you left batteries in there too? No, long? no. The, the 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 battery that was in it expanded. Oh. And and got stuck in it, ruined okay. it. Yeah. It broke. So they under warranty they replaced it. Wait, yeah, no. so which which one is that? Is that the one with a hub or one without a hub? Without a hub. Well hang hang on. Let me go but get it. it. I, but I it is remember. a rechargeable one? It's rechar well, yeah. It had a rechargeable battery in it. It had a had a tray. So, you stuck yeah. it in a charging tray. It's old. I mean, it's the first generation. No, so what I gave Amnon is even older. It's on four, uh, four triple uh, A batteries. Yeah. Uh, and um, you connect it via a mini USB to uh, to configure it. Let me look. Uh, it's got this has the color screen. And, and, the, the and you Harmony know, I mean, one. he 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 gave it to me because he, he didn't need it. But you know, he had the nerve to do. What took the batteries out? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, I mean, so, I knew exactly how long it's going to be sitting in the uh, in the yeah. office without any use, and I didn't want the but batteries. But are you to saying? That's all. Are you saying <laughs> that the old one that Spence has is newer than this? And yeah, it's and like one generation later. But he said, "I thought." Spence, I thought you said first generation, so it's not. I, I thought it was. Oh, Maybe it oh, wasn't. Okay. I, I thought one. it was. Yeah. yeah it was Let me go. Uh, yours, I, yours has a, a a screen on it, right? Yes, it's got like a color a, screen. A colorful screen. Yeah. Right. So wow. the one I gave Amnon is a black and white LCD, like a calculator. Oh. Uh, type. Like a uh, phone. That's like from like 1979 or something. Uh, not 79. <laughs> 82. It makes no difference as long as it works. Yeah, I mean, yeah, who yeah. cares what year it is or what and where, you know. My, my problem was at the time I was using it for so many different devices. And I also had a uh, media server, Microsoft Home. Yeah, I remember whatever they that. Called it. I, yeah. I, built, I, I built a Microsoft server. Yeah. And, and I was trying to not, not to... I fault Pam for this, but she was like, why did you have to make it so complicated? It's supposed to make it easier. 
to have not have all these remotes when it was like, well, you have to click this to get to that. You know, it, it wasn't so it, was, it wasn't worth it. So so one of the things I came up with was I to, to handle all the remotes. I took and I put Velcro on the back of all the remotes and I took a piece of wood and made a frame. So I had three remotes on one side, you flip it over and there are three remotes on the other side, but it was all in one piece. So you didn't have and to go she And Pam accepted it? <laughs> yeah, because it was, it was like, you could see each different thing. Oh, this is for the DVD player and this is for this and this is for that. She did not like the idea of having like a, sound, a separate sound system and all that though. I was like, no, 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 no. Well, I remember that with, yeah. with Mari as well when I introduced oh. it. But, but the, what solved it for me was the Harmony remote. Yeah. Oh, I, I, Because the Harmony worked. remote in one button, it turned everything on, put it on the right input and all that. And you, you switch it off. It, it and did if work. something didn't work, you just ask it for help and it asks you questions and fixes the situation, right? And that's what, that, and that's did it. It, it, it. it got to the point where I was fixing it so much because of things that would change that it's like, ah, you know, all right, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get it. All right. Okay. <laughs> but, um, well, I, I one, mean, two. The what? Well, no, I wanted to switch. Oh. The... It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's something that you have to get used to for sure. I mean, it's, it's almost like holding another computer in your hand. In order to control it, it's not just the remote, you know, off, on, volume, you know. This is why I love the Roku remote. It was so simple. There was nothing to it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. The design today for remotes, the ones that come. Uh, um, so back then when, when I bought the Harmony, mm -hmm. we had a Sony TV at home. And the Sony TV... It, it was a CRT, right? It came with two remotes. The one remote was as large as the remote I gave you, like very, very long. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, centimeters. That means 10 inches, right? 10 inches long with a whole slew of buttons, exactly like the, 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 the Spectrum remote that you, sh that you showed me, right? Yeah. Too many buttons, yeah. right? Had a lot of functions. But it also came with an additional small remote the size of the Roku remote to, with to, a very few buttons on it. To program the big one. <laughs> no, no, to use instead. Oh. So it actually came with three remotes because that long remote, you could flip it on the other side, right? And replace the cover to the other side. And then you had like uh, still a long remote with a few, with uh, half of the buttons, right? Mm. Like only a TV set buttons, not like a complete, Easy. So, the, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Sony, right? They created a lot of weird stuff along the years, but they were one of the first ones. <laughs> that was one of the first times that I, I saw the idea of this simplistic remote, uh, the small one. And that small one, which had, you know, a few uh, directional, you know, channel up, channel down, and some volume, that was what was needed most of the time you didn't need anything else and that design caught up right because you look at today at the um at the roku you look today at the fire tv you look at the apple tv remotes you look at uh any other um idea like that they're very small very simplistic few buttons only the functional ones because everything else can be done on screen today with some sort of menu and most of it you don't need to access daily, so it doesn't matter. No. So, yeah, the, 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 the simpler, the, the less buttons, the better. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing. I agree. Spence, you want to show us something? Yeah. Talk. Wait a minute. Alan oh, is sorry, asking I... for a link to the remote. I'll, I'll find which remote I gave you. So, here it is. Color mm -hmm. screen. Yeah. It's brand new. So I mean, it, that's it's, the one, right? That's the Harmony One. Yeah. Harmony it One. Yeah. It comes with a charging cradle. It's lithium ion battery. It's 2011, is the. Is the yeah. uh, so, Amnon, you remember we downloaded software and then it says yeah. you need an older software? Right. So, the Harmony One, I think, is the first iteration that uses the newer software. Oh. So, will this, will this support 
devices, new devices too? Do they keep yes. updating it? Yes. Hmm. I mean, infrared is infrared, right? Yeah, I mean, what, the, what... the thing is when Gal was, was uh, programming it or then it was asking me for the model of the TV. I said, what difference does it make? They didn't exist at the time of this. I said, no, well, it's, a database. Do... it's a database. It's a database that do... they have and they, they, they find it. But you can do that learning process with the remote, right? You just, you just you can if you can't find a solution inside yeah. the database, but usually, yeah. usually you find. Yeah, so okay. it's a uh, huh, USB cable. I guess you could probably update that because it's a, it's the old original micro USB. It's not yeah, it's just mini. like this one. I guess yeah. that that was their their thing. That yeah. that's how they download the new software and stuff like that. And so this oh, this battery was brand new. They sent me a new battery with the new thing. It's never even been charged, but I don't know it's any good anymore. No, sitting. But yeah, I got the whole thing here. All right. All you know, right. Even have the I have the little cloth case with it too. The whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just. I, you need I to thought when I when I was cleaning, I found it when I was cleaning up uh, one, mm -hmm. of the, one of the rooms, and I said, you know, I I really should look at this again. And then I thought about all the things I have on my list to do, and I said, mm, not not going to happen. <laughs> Do you remember when you bought it? Uh, no, not really. I mean, if this if it says 2011 on this, so it's probably, I'm going to guess probably 2012. So, so I'm going to guess it was pretty it soon cost after, you, after it, it came cost out. you more than 200 bucks then. Yeah, it was expensive. Yeah, I yeah. paid a lot of money for it. I remember. They're not, I remember they're, the. They're not cheap today either. Uh, depending on what I bought, uh, the ones I used at home. So, Harmony is a very interesting. So that concept of working in activities and controlling things in, in, uh, in, in uh, letting the the remote know the states of everything. So then you just shift from state to state, and it controls everything automatically. That started with these simple, simple those standalone Harmony remotes, even the Harmony one that uh, Spence showed, even that is standalone. And so um, what they did later, and when they started, it, looks, it looked nuts. And that's what I'm using today. And I, I, I love the idea. They're using a hub now. So your remote is connected via RF to a hub. And that hub has the IR um, blaster on it and uh, uh, sends the uh, infrared output. They also have remotes that can do both infrared and talk with the center. Now, I remember, why is that? I, I remember doing the, when I was doing the Microsoft media server, I had a, another remote that actually had the uh, IR blaster separate. And the, okay. I think I went through two generations of remotes trying to get that to work right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. first of all, when it comes to infrared, then any automation is usually wonky because there's there's phases and there's delay times and there's a lot of issues that you need to to figure out that using any other uh, remote uh, system later. But with the uh, hub, an additional value you get is if you have two remotes, like you said, Amnon, then both remotes, the entire system switches to the activity mode, right? So if you're watching TV, if you were using two uh, Harmony devices, then you needed both Harmony devices to be in watch TV mode. That means you'll use one to switch on. The moment you use the other to switch on, it'll turn off the TV. So you can't use two remotes, right? Mm -hmm. With a hub, everything changes because the hub just, the, the, the remote is an extension of the hub. And so they have evolved and, and the hubs today, they talk Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So they can control anything that it's Wi-Fi controlled or Bluetooth controlled, right? So it's, um, th there's an entire ecosystem. This is the beginning of smart uh, automation.
because yes, it's infrared automation, but that's the beginning of the whole concept. And today's Harmony hubs, they know to connect to Alexa, they know to connect to uh, smart things, they know to connect to a, a, anything in a smart home as well, you know, turn off the lights as well. So it's a... Uh... Now, you, you mentioned hubs, and it seems like I remember a few years ago there was an uproar when Logitech decided to stop supporting something Harmony hubs or did the Harmony hubs came into play then? I and think a lot... when the Harmony hubs came into play. And you couldn't use the old ones, but obviously using the old. There are a lot of people that say, what do you mean? Now we can't use the, the other stuff that we have. Or did they come with a new? I, I just remember something about Harmony hubs. Yeah. That so was an uproar. They did a shift at one point. First of all, they, like, like you saw, there are two, two uh, versions of the software. And then with the hub, there's another iteration because now you control the software from your phone, right? Mm -hmm. So you no longer load something on your PC, hook it up, but the hub is configured from the internet because you, need, you can control it from the PC, but you need the hub to be connected to the internet because that's how it gets its configuration. And yes, it's um, you're no longer in full control, right? It's no longer local. It's no longer something. Mm -hmm. If they go away, it'll stop working eventually. Uh, so that was part of the uproar. Yeah, uh, like you right are here on the... to computers 2K now. This is the remote show. <laughs> <laughs> On the on their support page, it says if you I have an older Harmony remote and I need software, it says well if you have any of the okay so Harmony, you need the, 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 the version seven yeah. it says you can so you, you can migrate from version seven software. to to my Harmony no problem yeah it sounds like you're still using the same software that I installed for Amnon so the remote I gave Amnon is Harmony five to five just search Google for it because even in shops um, logic. Okay. And by the way, Alan, you, Alan is asking which device, in our opinion, is best as a Plex client. I would swear by the uh, the Roku box. The, I, I'm using the Ultra. I'm using the Ultra because I wanted it wired, not wireless. That's the only reason. But it it was expensive, and and it, but it was worth it. Go ahead. No, yeah, you, there's nothing to add. Yeah, so I'll I'll get you this Amnon along okay. with the sprinkler. Yeah, we'll try. I Absolutely. got a sprinkler for Aaron for Amnon too. Oh very yeah, high, by the very way, high tech. <laughs> uh, these remotes, the Harmony remotes, if you if you are interested in it, then then just wait for Black Friday. There's usually, or just put a an, an alert on Slick Deals. Because they usually uh, go into a very substantial uh, uh, price reduction during the uh, holidays, holiday shopping season. So. I mean, I can see that, especially these days when you have so many devices at home. You need a remote that could, could control more than just the TV. And well, it sounds like this one is the one. Uh, there's there's one that I think that is even more interesting. I, uh, it's called Seven Hugs. Um, I'll send the link in a second. And it is what makes it interesting is it has a, f a couple of features that are very very unique. So, um, it. First of all, it's also based on a on a like a, a a hub. That hub is where you charge it. Uh, the hub is connected to uh, via Wi-Fi to your system, mm -hmm. and the remote itself. The remote itself is small. It's like uh, the size of the Roku. It's flat. I'll, I'll bring it in a second. I'll show you where you can see it in the site. And it's uh it has infrared control from the remote itself exactly like a harmony uh and the base can talk uh everything that needs to talk wi-fi and bluetooth right 
here's the unique thing. When you buy it, you buy it with spatial, uh, three spatial um, um, sensations, I'll call it, something like that, that you put around the room. And then when you point with the remote, uh, you, you train it. And when you point in the remote, whatever you're pointing at, the remote changes to that mode. So you can point at the light and, it'll, and turn it on and off just by pointing and, and clicking the power button. You can point at your uh, thermostat, right? And then just adjust the, uh, the, um, hmm. the temperature, temperature. With, your, with, your, with the knob on the display. It's a, just a flat display with a, an LCD display. And uh, the build quality is good and everything. I think there's still a few quirks. I bought it via a Kickstarter. Uh, got hooked. Um, they, and when they delivered it, it's, uh, it was you know a fun surprise because with Kickstarters, you never know if you're going to get it eventually or not. Uh, and I can say they, uh, they put a lot of work in that thing. It's quite endearing. It's not perfect. It has a few issues, especially if you're using something like um, uh, a Fire TV. It controls a Fire TV, but it connects as Bluetooth. And the problem is that the moment it is switching from its mode, for example, then it unpairs, no, not unpairs, but disconnects the Bluetooth and reconnects. And every reconnection like this on a Fire TV creates an, a notification, an audible notification. You, 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 so if you move the remote during you, while watching, you get blip, 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 <laughs> right? <laughs> Stuff like that. So it's, it's excellent if you're using the right systems, but uh, uh, it has some issues, but it's a very interesting remote. This one, I would say this one is a remote for everything. It's really, really interesting. I think I sent the wrong link, so bear with me. It's, uh, it's definitely, yeah, I'll send, go ahead. This is the right remote. This is the right link. The last one. It's, it's definitely an interesting uh, concept of how you use a remote and how a remote can be utilized. And so, I mean, I, we all seen places and, you know, homes of, people that have two and three and four and five remotes that they have to use each one for something different. Um, I still, I still think that the uh, Time Warner slash Spectrum remote should be able to, I mean, it has five different devices, uh, should be able to be used for different things. Uh, I, when, when I couldn't, get the harmony yesterday to change the volume i just i just went and i googled about connecting spectrum uh remote to tcl and bam i mean it was like three key presses on the on the remote but you needed to know the code and they gave you the code for the TCL to say you need to try this, this, or this. It was the they first do have a They do have a search feature too. So that if you don't know the code, you can just keep advancing. You put it into a certain mode and you just um, keep going. You turn the TV on and when it turns itself off, you stop and save it and try and that. With the, with, the time, with the spectrum? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know. I mean, they say this is how yeah. you do it. And I press, boop, and it works I now have. to turn it off and on and it works for the volume but nothing else. So, I mean, it's, it's just, I never really worried about remotes. I mean, you know, it's something that you, that you, you don't learn anything from because from these type, because you do it once and that's it. It's set it and forget it. And, you know, maybe, the next time, if there is something happens to the remote, uh, you need to do it again. And in most cases, when something happened to the remote, I mean, it was during you know, the days when 
those guys were still coming out, they would do it. So you never learn how to do it, and you never say, ah, I want to know. No, I don't want to know. I just want it to work. And, and uh, in most cases, it worked just fine. So now with this, it's a, it's a learning curve. It's like it's almost like uh, being a programmer. And and there's nothing wrong with that. It's I, just you need to get that thing to work with it. All I would really need, I have a couple of the Spectrum remotes downstairs, mm -hmm. and I have the Vizio remote, and I have the Roku remote. And I don't really even need the Vizio remote um, because the there is an input switch on the Spectrum mm -hmm. remote that will change the, the input. So that's that's not a problem. You just have to make sure you press the TV button on the top so that you select that feature. Because if you're pressing it, it's on cable and we're doing it. Right. So um, that's the why the reason why I keep the other one handy is if there's something I want, if I wanted to adjust the sound settings or something on the Vizio is the reason I have that remote handy. Sometimes I'll, if I have the sound bar on, which isn't all that often, I'll you know turn the t turn the audio off on the television so you can sync the sound up. Sometimes the when you're using the digital out to the sound bar, there's a little bit of an audio delay and you want to cancel that out, turn off the speakers on the TV and then just use the, the uh, there's a slider you can do use to adjust the delay timing of the audio. But um, I was also thinking, you know, because of the problem that Gallo was facing with getting it to control the soundbar. Now, if that was a Vizio TV, would the same problems come up? Or did they fix it so their, their remote will work with any of their soundbars? I mean, I theoretically, don't know. It, theoretically, it does. You can the volume up and volume down will change the sound bar, but if you want to adjust the subwoofer separate, no, I mean do this one doesn't the, help. You can't do it from yeah. the like the, the sound bar remote has a separate subwoofer adjustment. Oh, ours so doesn't have a subwoofer. Yeah. Period. Oh, okay, but if you did have that, the, the Vizio TV remote would not let you adjust. Okay, maybe well, some, maybe the high end ones would. I don't know, but the one I have. No, no, no. Amnon's woofer is not sub. Woofer. <laughs> <laughs> it does sub like the woofer and tweezer all right um uh, go ahead. Gene, Gene has a question just before i think it's time yeah. for special right yeah but go so, ahead uh, uh Gene had a question about uh uh best way to uh managing clipboards clipboard manager for windows so if everyone's using the Windows 10 with the latest updates, I think it's a year now. Uh, if you hit Windows and V, like if you paste, Control V is paste. If you hit the Windows key next to the Control and V, uh, the first time it'll ask you whether you want to activate the Clipboard Manager. And... Um, once that's on, you get a built-in clipboard manager into Windows. So that's the, the native one. It is good enough for most people, uh, and it, it's very convenient. I've been using a clipboard manager for, for the past uh, probably seven years at least, and uh, it makes life so much easier. Uh, the Windows clipboard is very able, but it has its own limitation. It, uh, uh, and some of these are based on, on security concerns. So it will start forgetting pastes that are older than a than few hours or something like that. So it, it, it will try not to keep in memory things that might, because one of the things that you might be copy pasting is passwords and usernames and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't preserve them. If you know what you're doing and you want something more complex, I would recommend Copy Q. I'll write the name, and I'll send the link in a second. Copy Q is uh, is a very, very, very able uh, clipboard manager. You can add scripting into it. It has 
uh, it can do a million and one thing. You can search within it. You can do a lot of things. And uh, that's what I use for my day-to-day. -day. I actually use both. I make sure that the Windows Clipboard Manager is on and CopyQ uh, is on. And I have a way of... Uh, I keep my clipboard for ages. And I, because of security concerns, I did add uh, scripts to the CopyQ, which you... The, 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 the documentation is very good on how to do that, uh, where I can mark things as blacklisted. And so if something comes up that I do not want it to be saved into the clipboard anymore, I mark it as blacklisted. And so the next time I copy it, it doesn't even go into the queue. And it does, this with, it, does it with hashes and stuff, so it, you, it never preserves the password in its database. It's a very, very good uh, piece of software, open source. So that was uh, Clipboard Managers. Huh. How, do, it how, do you erase, how do you erase the clipboard if you needed to? Just copy something else. No, I'm talking about the, the uh, inside Win the manager. The the manager in in Windows 10. I mean, so once you once you uh, see the list of yeah. uh, items in the clipboard, you right. have a uh, an ellipsis uh, button next to uh, each of the entries. Mm -mm. You just click it, and you hit, there's a clear all. There is nothing next to each one. Uh, I can see it, so I don't know. If you'll share your screen, I can probably. It's on the laptop. I can't. This doesn't go in. But it's. On, for me, it's. Uh, there's, when, when I hit uh, Windows and V, I get a clipboard um, uh, float, floating window with a few entries. Uh, each entry has on its top right corner a three dots. Interesting. And there's delete, pin, and clear all. I thought that you had to turn it on every time, but it doesn't. And I'm looking now, and I've got all kind of weird things that I copied that I really don't need. So they clutter the place. Where are you looking at? I'm looking. I did control, I mean, Windows V, and it opened up. I'm looking at my, uh, my laptop here. Oh, okay. And there's a bunch of stuff that just... Uh, apparently, I, I did it some time ago, and it's not floating. I can't move it. It's in the right, lower right corner, and it stays there. I can't, I, I can't drag it or anything. I Is that the laptop we used yesterday? No. No, that's the laptop I'm using here in the studio. Anyway, don't worry well, about this. Don't worry about it now. Let's do the specials. You ready, Spence? I'm ready. Specials. Here we go. Um, let's see. There are. There are. Uh, they have a really good deal at Harris Teeter on, on uh, pre-cooked barbecue ribs. Okay. <laughs> oh wait a second. Wrong. Sorry. All uh, right. Do, so the, do the barbecue ribs have Bluetooth? <laughs> absolutely. Bluetooth and uh, uh, Jigby, and <laughs> also Nearfield, and <laughs> what was one? Was another one? I can't remember now. It was one more. Some older technologies, 900 megahertz. Here we go. So uh, back to a more traditional format. Although I have to say today, Staples and Office Depot were easy to navigate, easy to find things. Best Buy must have high, must, I, I don't know what's going on with their webpage, but it was so normally under when things were normal. You go there and you click on the current, they used, it's not called weekly ad anymore, but you could still go and say deals. And then you say show categories and you click on the category and they had a very nice list that I could easily just copy and paste into the document. And that doesn't exist anymore. It hasn't for a long time. But the point was it was really difficult today to work with the Best Buy pages and the good news is, though, that things are starting to come back. You're starting to see availability of, of low and mid-priced laptops come back. Uh, monitors, starting to see monitors come back. The one thing that is 
is there but has not come back price wise yet is printers printers remain except low end inkjets but try to find a good low end like brother laser you could sometimes get on sale a uh, duplex wireless uh, monochrome brother laser for under 100 bucks with a good with a good sale usually about 110 doesn't exist can't find it literally they're out there to buy but at, at full price or, or higher you know whatever the market fair is saying all right so let's get started Ten, uh october 25th 2020 and we're looking at staples here apple airpods second generation bluetooth 129 30 bucks off the regular price and you know I, the only reason i listed this next item is because i'm thinking so many people working from home and uh, ex over an extended period of time that they normally would not were probably wearing out the inexpensive office chair that they had that maybe they had one that oh i don't work at home very much so i didn't spend a lot of money on a good office chair i i happen to have really good stuff because when i worked for nortel they gave you this stuff they gave you herman miller furniture and to keep and uh chairs and things so I have one that I haven't had to replace anything in a long time. But if you have an old chair that just if it if it's uncomfortable to sit in, it, Staples does have some deals. They've got a a molded foam task chair. That must be a real place. light chair. It's a real light chair. It's mesh, but it's got molded foam. It's only molded. Uh, it's all made out of foam. Everything, the wheels and everything. It's it's, it's very <laughs> soft, quiet. It rolls around. <laughs> But 50 bucks off, it's a new model Lazy Boy mesh molded task chair for 199, 50 off. All right, they got an APC 900 VA battery backup and surge protector for 79.99, that's $23 off. They've got, uh, finally, finally, the prices of USB 3.0 stuff has normalized now that it's out there. 2.0 stuff is still available, but for the most part, the 3.0 stuff is getting to be reasonably priced. A uh, 32 gig Lexar USB 3.1 drive for 9.99, nine bucks off. You can buy the 64 gig version of them for 14.99. And USB, if you're copying a lot of files, USB 3 makes a huge difference between USB 3 and 2. In so speed. Finally, in speed, yeah. Yeah, I still buy some cheap 2.0s for stuff I'm going to copy once and save because mm -hmm. I'll just throw, put, throw it in a box or whatever I'm going to save right. it for. Because I, it doesn't matter how long it takes. But if I'm doing an upgrade, which I'm actually going to do this week for a small business, I'm going to be upgrading their computers and transferring files. I'm going to use the 3.0 stuff. It's just because it would save me so much time. Okay. Uh, we've got a Seagate Barracuda 500 gig uh, solid state drive for $62.99. That's $12 off. They, do make a, they did also have a one terabyte on sale today for about 99 bucks. Uh, HP 17.3 inch Intel i3 uh, laptop for 499. That's 50 bucks off. Uh, got a Lenovo Idea inch. Center uh, i5 desktop for 469, which is 100. Huh? Wait, what, what? Wait a second. God, what did you say? No, 17 inch. That's a huge laptop. That is. Yeah. In, in fact, I was recommending something to someone who was upgrading, and I said, well, you if you use a small monitor now, like a, an older monitor, it was an older machine, I think it was even running uh, Windows XP. I said, a 17 inch monitor may be bigger than the little monitor you're using now. So this was a good, very good compromise for them working. You can always add another monitor, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, 17 is big. Um, not, not a good travel laptop. Just Depends on the weight, the yeah. Factor. Yeah, they're light, a lot lighter than they used to be used to be when you when you hauled around a 17 inch uh, laptop it used to it would weigh 15 or more pounds very heavy yeah yeah, yeah. uh lenovo idea center uh i5 desktop for 469 that's 130 dollars off and a lenovo i5 um idea through idea pad 3 i5 laptop for 579 which is 70 bucks off and thankfully, also, the prices on backup drives have started to come down. Seagate Backup Plus 4 terabyte USB 3.0. This is a full, full size form factor. It's not a travel drive. It's, for, it's to sit on the desk. But if you're building a, um, 
local network backup solution where you've got a wireless router that has a USB port that will share the drive. This is the kind of drive you want to buy. Don't buy a don't buy a small form factor drive. Buy the three and a half inch form factor just for reliability mm -hmm. and and cost. Yeah, because but, it has its own power. And it has its own power. Uh, Ninety nine bucks. Uh, normally one fourteen, so fifteen off. This is the Epson ES fifty. This is the uh, scanner I I actually have that we talked about last week. It's on sale for ninety nine twenty dollars off. I did actually find my older one, my older scanner that didn't have the proper drivers. And as I was digging through my, my closet and what I liked about the old one was that it, it did automatic two-sided scanning, which sometimes is useful if you're scanning documents, but if you're scanning pictures, who cares, right? So, but this does, this has a lot of uh, um, utilities built in for cropping and things like that. It, it will work with, it, it says to scan receipts, photos, cards, credit cards, whatever you want to scan. It's set up to do unusual shapes. So a, a good scanner. Does it do auto cropping? Do I think that, I don't know that their software does the auto cropping, but it will, I think it actually does it automatically. It will detect, it will detect. I've used it and I've never had to actually turn that feature on. So it will save, it'll save the file auto cropped. So if you put it. a Taking business to the, Taking us to the discussion about photo scanners, this needs a computer, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. This is not a standalone scanner. Yeah. You got to have a computer. Yes. So when you, if you stick a, a business card in it, it will save just the card. card. Yes. Yeah. And so. save it as a file. You can save it as a, uh, whatever your software, what you save it as. Is that what and you they mean have, by? They have software with it. Is this what you mean by auto cropping? Yeah, that's auto cropping. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, now I apologize. I don't remember this uh, Canon image class, the MF two sixty four DW wireless printer one forty nine, so fifty off. I, I don't think this is a laser. I think it's an inkjet um, because I would be amazed to have a multifunction laser be this cheap. Um, actually, it could be. No, it it. I don't remember. Possible. I I meant to. The the problem with some of these when I capture these things is that. Uh, without clicking on it to go into details, the roll, sometimes the rollover link will give you the full, the full explanation because what shows up here is the shortened version of the, of the link. So it doesn't yeah. actually say whether it's, uh, but it could be, but, the, but a, any multifunction, whether it's inkjet or, or um, laser, laser with a sheet feeder, it looks like it's a fax machine too because it's got too many buttons. Um, but 149 is actually a pretty good deal. Laser beam printing. Laser. Okay, good. Okay, so it is a laser for 149, and that's pretty good. Um, HP DeskJet 4, 4155 all in one USB wireless inkjet for 99 bucks. And that is all at Staples. Moving on to Office Depot. Here's another interesting device, and we've seen these before. This is a portable monitor. And really all it is is the 15.6 inch screen that would go with a laptop separated off into its own form factor with a power supply and connectivity. This one, what I like about it is that it, it will use type C or mini HDMI as the input from a device, which is nice. I like the type C. Uh, so it will, it doesn't necessarily go straight HDMI in. It will accept the USB input. Uh, it does, it comes with the three different cables, USB-A, USB-C, and HDMI to mini HDMI. Comes with an earphone, that's a big deal. Uh, power adapter stand, stand and external speaker system, internal speaker system, and a three-year warranty. It's um, hmm. 139 and uh, normally 179, so it's a, a good sale. So if you, again, for people who are still struggling at home with trying to find a monitor because they want to work at home, couldn't find anything they liked, this is a great uh, monitor because it's it comes with a stand, but it, yep. it, it, it can double. Sometimes people have a problem where they go, they have a 15.6 inch laptop and a 24 inch screen and looking back and forth sometimes gives them some eye strain or a little disorientation. If you have two screens, the same size, I have two 24s side by side. It's really easy to switch back and forth. <clears throat> so, it it just seems like it's a it's a 
useful device and the price is pretty good. Webcams are still in short supply, especially Logitech, but J, J5 creates a good brand. They've been around for a while. Uh, they do have, I, I've never had a camera of theirs. I've had other types of adapters um, that I've used very successfully, but J create USB web hard HD webcam for $59.99. What it is does the have 360? A privacy, privacy screen to flip up to cover the camera. What's 360? 360. 360 degree, I have no idea. I, I, I think it might be audio, something to do with audio. Oh. But Jeffrey Tubin could have used this. <laughs> you know, the little, the privacy screen. Yep. If, and I don't know if all of you are following that whole story, but it's pretty hysterical. Um, all right. Lenovo IdeaPad S340, a laptop 15.6 inch. A set i7 8 gig 256 SSD for 599. It's 200 to 180 dollars off the regular price. Got an Acer 24 inch monitor. Finally, the price is coming down. 99 bucks on sale, 20 dollars off. And we've got an uh, that's a 24 inch, and we've got a 27 inch Acer uh, ultra thin uh, 139, which is 40 dollars off the regular price. A brother printer, not on sale, and would normally sell probably in the, like 110 to 120 range. Uh, brother, this is the HL L237 and 2370 uh, DW duplex wireless for 152.99, not on sale. But if I was going to recommend a laser printer, this is what I would recommend. A brother. Uh, we got a Western Digital. One terabyte portable external hard drive for $54.99, normally $74.99, so 20 off. And finally, a 10 terabyte Western Digital MyBook external USB 3.0 drive for $199, which is $175 off the regular price. Now that might be that might be the MSRP. Does Probably. it really sell for regular price is really $374? But $199. So not bad. Um, finally, with Best Buy, and I apologize for the kind of convoluted the way, way stuff shows up on the page because it was literally having to click on different elements of the actual screen to assemble it into something that could be read. So it looks fine. Okay. So yeah, to me, it was just, it was just it looks extra fine. work, extra work. But all right. So moving from, from left to right, we've got the Apple latest model 10.2 inch iPad. Uh, 32 gig model for 299, which is 30 bucks off. I have the latest model iPad, and I'm that this particular model too, and I'm I'm very happy with it. I had two older ones, an original and second generation iPad that just became unusable for most things. What What's nice about this one is it supports multitasking on the screen. If you're above you uh, iOS 13 and you have the right hardware, you can actually do. It's, it's a little weird to set up the first time because it's much easier for you to launch these things from the task bar, but you can actually multitask on the screen, two different types, side by side and overlay. And it just, if you want to listen, if you want to listen to a YouTube in the background, uh, something that you can't, if you click away from the screen, the sound goes dead. You can do it with this because you can keep a little window open, a little overlay window with the YouTube video running just to listen to the audio and do something else on the screen. So it's, it's very useful. Mm -hmm. We've got an Asus VivoBook 15.6 inch laptop with a Ryzen 5 processor, eight gig of memory uh, for 499, which is a hundred off. We've got an HP AMD Ryzen 5 desktop, 12 gig of memory, 256 solid state drive for 549. That's not a sale price, but still, um, pretty good. We've got a Dell 13-inch, uh, 13.3-inch touchscreen laptop with a, I believe it's an i5, a 629.99. That's uh, $200 off touchscreen. And I, I'm actually going to put together a, I don't know what I'm going to get to it because I, I don't want to have enough time on a Sunday morning to do it. But I want to put together a couple of slides on Wi-Fi 6 and what, what the benefit is of it and why people are going to want to do it. 
I mean, it just it's it really does make a huge difference, especially in such a cluttered Wi-Fi world. Um, I've been collecting bits and pieces of information about the standard and so on. I just have to sit down and do it. But this this particular router, this is a um, Linksys AC 1750 dual band Wi-Fi 5. Wi-Fi 5 is the 802.11 AC standard. Um, this is a great price for, for a dual band uh, 1750, 99 bucks, save 30. This will, this will solve a lot of people's problems in their homes, just this by itself. But if you've got a, if you're in an apartment building, there's lots of Wi-Fi around, you're getting clobbered by so many signals competing. Remember that Wi-Fi up to Wi-Fi 5 uh, is a one person talks at a time environment. So if you're on the same channel as another Wi-Fi router next door to you, that's on a different system, you're gonna be competing with each other for that particular frequency. So that's why when you set up your Wi-Fi, you should try to use some type of a scanning tool to find out what frequencies are happening nearby. Most people just leave it at the default, which is there are only three, three, three clear channel frequencies that don't overlap. So usually they come set to one of those. But what you do is you just try to pick a different frequency and just play with that to see if you can improve your performance. But the, um, this is a great, this will solve a lot of problems because it has very good uh, noise cancellation, interference monitoring, and also dynamic frequency changes to adapt to um, the environment. Then we get into Wi-Fi 6. Now look at this. Does this, this is, this is one wicked looking machine here. Look at this. Raj, ROG Capture AX 11,000 tri-band Wi-Fi router. 449. You gonna buy one, Amnon? No. Yeah. No? Put no. it upside down and see if it walks. That's it. It's <laughs> actually, that's what it is. It, it follows you around the house. Yeah. So it gives you a good signal everywhere. But this, this technology will come down in price and it will be built into, you know, smaller and less sophisticated. It does require a lot of antennas. But what Wi-Fi 6 can bring to the table is that you can have much better management of the available bandwidth. You can actually transmit across multiple band, multiple frequencies at the same time and use a load sharing algorithm. It will send traffic down different pathways, so to speak. It's like, it's like the, uh, the port that goes into an application. You can have, instead of having just one port open to talk to that app, you can have multiple ports all at the same time doing load sharing. But you need- way, If one other frequency gets clobbered, it'll just automatically readjust and send it across an adjacent frequency to keep your, um, your bandwidth moving. The old way of solving a bandwidth problem was just to make everything that used the bandwidth faster. The routers got faster, the PCs got faster, they processed the information faster. So you were talking, only you were talking, but you talked very fast. So then the next person could talk and then the next person could talk and so on. What these routers do is they actually allow uh, multiple in and multiple out MIMO technology which allows these routers to talk multiple sessions to multiple people at the same time, which is great. Did you come across how much a little dongle would cost? I mean, the, the PC has to support Wi-Fi. 6. Yes, it does. The card has to support So, this. So you can probably have get not, a, a dongle. It's going, to be, it's going to be a problem because of the antenna structure, because you're going to have to have, the reason why you see all these antennas is to support multiple devices. Now you, an individual device may not need this number of antennas, but you're still going to have a more complicated array of antennas. Mm -hmm. um, they have something called rake. Uh, it's a military technology, a rake receiver. If you can picture, you take a garden rake and you lay it tines up on the ground and you got a whole bunch of just antennas next to each other. Rake receiver means that it, it will uh, have some algorithm that will switch which frequency it transmits on for security purposes. This was used by the military for digital communications for privacy. So they use that same idea now, the rake technology. That's why you see so many different antennas. Because to solve the bandwidth issue, they might have a round robin where they'll transmit uh, each, each little portion of the data going to a device. It might it start with antenna one, antenna two, antenna three, antenna four, just move its way around mm -hmm. and switch frequencies on the fly. So to, in order to do that to a device, you're gonna have to have all those antennas. So it'll be interesting. But great, great for um, 
uh, you know, environments that require a lot of energy. Okay, so they have a 23.8 inch uh, uh, HP FreeSync monitor for 129, which was uh, say 50 bucks. You got a uh, Western Digital four terabyte external USB a portable drive for 97. That's a really good price for four terabytes, for, especially for a portable. But again, if I was using it and it was gonna stay at home and sit on the desk, I would get a three and a half inch one, probably not a two and a half inch, yeah. Just for self powering issue and, and temperature issues with the case. So it's normally uh, 149 for 97.99. And finally, uh, Ultra 32 gig SanDisk, USB 3L flash drive for eight ninety nine. dollars That's uh, nine bucks off, so half price. And that's it for specials for October 25th, 2020. Thank you. Oh, what happened to your background? Oh, it's, it, I, have some, I don't know. I didn't move anything, but it seems to, it's just something just moves over on its own. Oh. <laughs> Either the, ca the camera is walking and I don't know how it's doing that. <laughs> it's literally, I mean, it's, it's serious. I have to keep turning the, the mount. I have the gooseneck that you gave me. Yeah. That's got the, it's not actually mounted to the table. It's just sitting on a, on a hard flat surface and I don't have to, it's heavy enough that it doesn't do anything, but something is making it turn. Hmm. I don't know why. Um, talk about hard drives. I, I needed a bigger hard drive for Omar's uh, CCTV. So I yeah. ordered, I found a four terabyte Seagate drive on eBay and haggled with the guy and got it for $43. Whoa. New? It was no, it wasn't new. I got it. I didn't even open it. Holes in it? No. The guy feels like he wrapped it in one layer of bubble uh, wrap, very, very thin. You just stuck a stamp on it? <laughs> and put it into a plastic bag, you know, those gray oh. bags, that, and shipped it like that. Oh, and boy. I went right away and I said, I need to return it. I'm not even opening it. I said, who in their right mind will send, will ship a hard drive like this, that he knows it's going to get tossed around. And there is no way. I said, even if it doesn't have any visible damage on the outside, I don't want it because it's damaged on the inside. I can't believe that somebody would do something like that. Was this uh, eBay or yeah. what, what did you buy? eBay. Yeah. eBay. Yeah. yeah. That's too bad. There it is. It's shame. Anyway, um, let's see what, uh, I mean, like quick things, uh, Dropbox announced last week that it will stop asking employees to come to the office, instead make remote work a standard practice even after the pandemic. So that's another company that says, hey, people, you can stay working from home, which is, uh, it seems like to be, it seems like it's a trend. Well, you think about it, they realize they can do it, and it saves them a whole bunch of money. Of course. And with, and real the real, the problem is that the real commercial real estate market, it's, it's, it's follow I don't know at what stage it's in its collapse right now, but it's going yeah. to collapse. Hey, definitely. Because when all the, all the financial, um, all the uh, borrowing that was done to build these properties that aren't being filled now, mm -hmm. that's going to be a problem. Yeah. So. And God, this is something you can uh, comment on. TV cord cutting is picking up steam. And at and CEO predicts there's a long way to go before it stops. On an earning call Thursday, AT&T's Chief Executive Officer, John Stanky, 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 
said, we're probably going to see a little bit of a plateauing when the number of homes subscribing to pay TV hits 55 million to 60 million. Most of those homes will include sports fans. It's a stark outlook for an industry that's already suffered a long subscriber exodus. There were about 91 million pay TV subscribers, subscribers at the end of 2019, including some 8 million who signed up to online TV bundles like Hulu and YouTube TV. About 3.5 million people cut the cord in the first half of the year, according to Bloomberg Intelligence. That's an oxymoron. While AT&T, Comcast, Charter, and other TV providers are focusing their business on delivering internet service, owners of cable channels are especially vulnerable. Because, yeah, they're going to be dropped, and they need to find a new way to, to market their stuff. I don't know what they're going to do. What do you think, Gus? I'm waiting for the U.S. to uh, embrace IPTV. Yeah. That'll be an interesting market to uh, work with. Because with IPTV, then any manufacturer can create just a box, right, that you put in the address, just like opening a browser, right? Right. Um, you have to the channel. And yeah. yeah, and then a cable channel like that, that... Uh, um, can just sell subscriptions directly. Amnon, do you remember the guy we interviewed who had written a book about IPTV back when we were in the studio? I remember talking about IPTV. No, I don't remember. Yeah, he was a guy who we interviewed him, and he actually was an author, and he wrote, he wrote historical novels. But I, I don't think I have his book anymore. I have his book on IPTV still. But he was way, way out there ahead. And he was pushing this and just tried to start associations and stuff. God, this has got to be, I don't know, when, when did we leave the station? Nine, uh, 2008. So it's over 10 years ago. Yeah. And this guy was way, way out there. The sad thing about IPTV today, it is, uh, in the States specifically, it's mostly pirated stuff. Uh, in yeah. Europe and in Asia, you get some legit um, uh, subscriptions based on IPTV, but it's it's like it's something that didn't uh, didn't catch, and that's too bad. Well, it's... it would have made things so simple. It's literally a replacement to RF, right? It's it's um, you just punch in an address. Put in your credentials and, and get go. content. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, so there was uh, in, in in kind of a reverse effect to the to the cord cutting. Uh, Netflix cancellations skyrocket uh, over that uh, documentary they produced called Cuties. Cuties. Um, Cuties. Because it was yeah. Uh, 600, 660,000 people signed an online petition that they would cancel their Netflix uh, subscriptions over this particular documentary that was produced. Uh, it was about uh, exploitation of children, but in, in and of itself, just showing what they did to, show, to supposedly talk about this, exploited these kids. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those, uh, uh, it was very strange. But yeah, enough people were upset about it. I, I don't know anything about it. Just I just read the stories. But apparently, uh, I, I saw some numbers recently on this, what the, what, how many people canceled. But they had a lot of cancellations over it. Interesting. I, I don't yeah. know that it will even I, put I a find dent. them watching Netflix less and less, and not, not because of that, but because it's just the I just, I'm finding more things on Amazon to watch that I like. Right. Than I do on Netflix. So. I, I still, I, I'm still not done exploring just the Roku, Roku channel and the, the, the free stuff that comes. It, it's yeah, just, yeah. I mean, 
tube tubi and philo and uh, uh, all kind of stuff yeah just i watched something last night from tubi an old movie and a lot and a lot of b stuff a lot of b movies that yeah. never really got anywhere <laughs> you, know, you want to watch some some you know hollywood actors making lunch money by doing a you know i have nothing to do so i'll do this adventure film that's like you know no. barely watchable now do you miss going to the movies a bit yeah well amc has begun to offer the option through its site uh with prices for renting out the theater starting at a surprisingly reasonable 99 dollars not in new york alaska or hawaii is that is that split, for uh, up, up to a certain amount of people or is that yeah change? Yeah. yeah split among 10 friends and you're already paying less than a normal movie ticket attendees can invite as many as 20 people to a screening which consists of classic titles like jurassic park halloween centric fair uh nightmare before christmas things like that prices go up up from there new titles like tenet and the new mutants cost up to 349 dollars for a single screening the former helmed by blockbuster director christopher nolan was set to be a kind of litmus test for moviegoers willingness to return to theaters so you can just rent the theater say hey guys you know let's go and watch jurassic park you know just just for the uh just for to go i, I wonder if they open the uh uh snack uh i i think they probably would because that's really where they make their money oh but well, it's interesting. interesting you can buy tickets to the durham theater seems like it's open so weird like regular you just uh they create buffers between sets of uh tickets now you have to you have to wear a, one of those plastic um uh water cooler jugs on your head when you go each yeah. one you play there's hoses hanging down from the ceiling providing you with fresh <laughs> air you just plug it into your your helmet and you sit there And but that that 20 you know, you know for for 99 bucks for 20 people yeah that's five bucks a person yeah i mean that's that. cheaper than the regular admission yeah, that's and, what they were saying yeah um well looks like here in the uh durham rally area yeah i, I just entered their site to uh, and you go to order a ticket and then it says social distancing is part of our AMC safe and clean initiative. We have made these changes to allow for social distancing. Sitting capacity is 40%. Uh, th so that's the total. And select seats marked with X in the map are blocked for social distancing. So if you buy um, a couple of spots, yeah. then it creates it basically reserves the seat next to you in each side right and those cannot be purchased and behind you and in front of you probably uh, Stag yeah, doesn't somehow. look that way no. well that's so worthless this is, uh, that's not social hold on hold on uh let me I, I saw something that was already purchased okay so I don't see an X on the, uh, I do see X's on the side, on the side. but I wonder, let me see if it'll allow me to select. Hmm. It does allow, but this is like a recliner. So I think they're, they're really spaced out, uh, these rows. Which, which theater is this? What, what? This is uh, AMC in uh, South Point. Oh, okay. Yep. I, think, I think the ones that'll survive, I mean, I, I really like Alamo. Um, their theaters the way they're set up i know it's they probably would have to do some social distancing but the idea with the food being served and the, their pricing is reasonable right? there's the other one that 
opened before them that was just so outrageous. The prices were crazy. The food is expensive and the movie was expensive. Yeah. And Regal uh, threw in the towel, right? Yep. Regal's done. They're going to close all their screens in the United States. So they're that's probably going to sell them to AMC or something. <laughs> AMC. I'm sure they've got to do something. Well, they got to do something. I mean, but yeah. that's Regal is the closest one we have, Apex. And they've, they've got a big chunk of the local market. Turn it into a restaurant. Listen to this. It will become illegal for anyone in the UK to pick up and use their mobile phone while driving under newer legislation to be enacted next year. The change will end a loophole that can allow drivers to escape punishment for using a handheld phone to take a photo or play a game. Mobiles will still be able to be used to pay for a drive-through takeaway, takeaways, and drivers will still be able to use devices hands-free under the planes. The Department of Transport said. At present, making phone calls and sending text messages are banned while driving. And ministers have rejected calls to also ban the use of hands-free function. For example, using a sat-nav in a phone cradle. Rhodes minister said hand-held phones used behind the wheel was distracting and dangerous and that for too long risky drivers have been able to escape punishment the change in law would apply across the uk and is expected to come into effect early next year now it makes sense well i kind of like the way the law in north carolina evolved because All they could do is, if they saw you driving with a phone, they could optionally charge you with reckless driving. Yeah. Because, or distracted driving. They didn't have to charge you specifically on a phone uh, And charge. it's not just when you're driving. What about when you're at the light and the car in front of you doesn't move because... Yeah. Oh, I know. It's, I mean... I, I, did, it, did you ever notice how it seems like at, at traffic lights now, people space themselves out much further? So they can go around. Pay, pay, well, maybe. But no, I don't think that's really right. It's not social why. distancing. No. <laughs> This has been for several years, but it seemed like something changed. And you see people pull up and a full two car lengths between cars. And that kind of blows up the whole civil engineering yeah. of creating oh, yeah. turning lanes and all that. Right. When, when it backs up into traffic, it really isn't a good idea. Right. So somebody tried to tell me to say, oh, well, it's, it's because... Uh, Driver's Ed teaches you now to leave enough room to pull around the car. I say, you don't need two car lanes to pull around the car. No. If you pull up and you can still see that you pull up so you just see their license plate in front of you, you can still You're pull fine. around them. Yep. But uh, there's something weird going on. And, and Pam and I were talking about it. We think it might be people self using cell phones, that they're distracted. And for some reason, it makes them hang back. I'm not, I don't know what it is. I mean, some people don't realize that all these wires in the roadway where you see like patching, yeah, this they, is they important. Yeah, cameras. that's important. Yeah. You have to go on top of them so it knows. It's a problem for motorcycles because they're not, they don't have enough metal exposed to the street to trip it. So you can actually buy a special device that sits underneath the motorcycle that will trip the Oh. I pulled up the traffic lights when it's not busy and not never gotten a green because it never tripped the, the, the turn signal. So do you remember it happened to us hauling stuff out of uh, North Hill? Oh, yeah, because the, the, deuce. The, the deuce is so high, it didn't trip <laughs> anything. Yeah. yeah. We're just standing there and standing there and yeah, <laughs> waiting. Nothing. Yeah. Um, Now, this is, this is kind of interesting. The Louisiana National Guard was called in to stop a series of cyber attacks aimed at small government offices across the state in recent weeks. 
citing two people with knowledge of the events, highlighting the cyber threat facing local governments in the run in the run up to the 2020 US presidential election. So you get the National Guard to come out there. The governments, the, those small governments or whatever, they don't have an IT department that can take care of that. I mean, after all the mess that some cities went through, I can't believe that there is any government office that doesn't have IT department that can do something about these things. I don't know. Well, maybe it's a new thing with, with tax revenues going down. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, it'll go down a lot farther if yeah. you got hit with a ransom no, a ransom uh, bill. You know, you know and, and, and there's a, a push to go to an all global currency. Yeah. Right. And think about it. If if your records are trapped somewhere, it tells how much you have in, on your card or in the bank, and you can't you can't access it. There was a, I don't remember what TV show it was, but there was a uh, a futuristic TV show that talked about a specific large global bank that had all their records wiped out by cyber terrorism and how what how that affected the world and it, because it's, it was literally a huge portion of the world and people just lost all access to their account and they come in i have my last statement we can't use that to, ver to verify your account well what do you have to verify their your my account and they they were lying to say oh we're working on it we're going to fix it when in reality everything was gone it had there was no back twitter they took out everything and what that would be like can you imagine with uh, um, a town's records if they're not protected? It used to be town records, you know, it was in an old church somewhere. Somebody had been writing them in a book and the church burned down and they lost all the records of all births mm -hmm. and it was gone forever. But what happens if you're, all your records in your town are gone forever because it gets right. Packed? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, Sorry, you can't. We have you can't prove that you own your property, right? Well, you, you they can also not prove that you don't. Yep. Or that you yeah. maybe you sold maybe you sold property to somebody else, and then and there's then, a, a, a a some type of liability comes up, <laughs> and they come after you even though you sold it. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kind of things that can happen. I agree. Yeah. But the point is. Learn from other governments' experience and do something. Um, I love I love this uh, this little article here. Former Google chief executive officer Eric Schmidt said the excess of social media is likely to result in greater regulation of internet platforms in the coming years. Schmidt left the board of Google parent Alphabet in 2019, but is still one of the largest shareholders, said the antitrust lawsuit the U.S. government filed against the company on Tuesday was misplaced. But that more regulation may be in order, more, may be in order for social networks in general. This is the best part I like. The context of social networks serving as amplifiers for idiots and crazy people. <laughs> this is coming from. <laughs> and, and who is he to <laughs> judge who the idiot and the crazy person is? Well, <laughs> right? It all depends on your perspective. He says, you, you not what we intended. You're gonna, I, I know. Fact checking is only as good as the, the people you hire to fact check. Maybe, maybe he's a so, doctor, yeah. Huh. Um, I'm not your crazy person. Yeah, I know. Sorry. He said that. I, that don't the I don't know you guys. You're just too crazy for me. That's it. <laughs> he, he said that at a virtual conference hosted by the Wall Street Journal on Wednesday. Unless the industry gets its act together, it's in a really.
clever way, there will be regulations. There should be regulations in to, Man, to a point. Regulation. To a point. Regulation in one place is fine, but if you don't apply the same standard to right. everybody, exactly. that's the problem. You've got people being banned. One, if a person comes from a specific group of people and posts something, it's safe. But if somebody comes from a different group and posts the very same thing, yeah, it's it's blocked. And there's tons of evidence, just tons of evidence that this is happening. Yeah. So it's not just a random thing. But you know, there are, the the good news is that there are other platforms. Another new platform just started this week to challenge a new social media platform. I don't remember the name of it or where it came from, but they made an announcement that it's it's I don't know if it's going to be another Gab. Well, you know, whatever happened to Gab? Are they still around? Oh yeah, yeah, they're still around. The I Gab all the time. was another one that had had uh, made a splash in the beginning. Um, oh, that was that parlay, parlay, parlor, parlor, yeah. yeah. And you know, promising no, you know, fair, fair, whatever they're going to do. I mean, it's supposed to be fair and not not no. ban you for. I mean, obviously, if you if you're saying certain things online it just you, everybody who says them should be banned but it's right. not calling for somebody to die or to go murder somebody or to go burn somebody's house to the ground should be grounds to be blocked so we talked last week about quibi that they were trying to sell it well nobody yeah, okay. wa- nobody wants to buy it so they're shutting down um you know, Quibi scheduled. You know what this is what? You know what this is? <laughs> yeah, wait, the world's, wait, wait, world's wait. smallest Here. violin. No, no put it. <laughs> I don't think everybody saw that. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are listening, that is the smallest violin <laughs> in the world, playing a sad tune. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I, I, the only people I, I, I have, I have no, I mean, I followed them. I even, uh, uh, checked out some of their content. Uh, the most unimpressive launch, the most unimpressive service compared to anything that happened around here. Yeah. They're only nothing. Everything was stacked against them and they wasted too much money to start with. They didn't build it gradually or anything. They right. just Yeah. So they came in a splash and they'll go out in a splash. In a splash. That's it. Are you saying they're another pets.com? Uh mm. probably, yeah. That I don't it. remember the, the the details of the pets.com thing, but yeah. They were they they got all this venture capital money. We're living high on the hog. They'd sell yep. a ten dollar bag of dog food for eight dollars with free shipping. And just thought, well, we'll just build the business up to the point where eventually we'll make money. And they never made money and spent all their, you know, just live high on the hog, all the executives and everything, just li- having the great offices and all that. Oh, what a great idea. It's such a great idea. And then they drink, whoops, sorry, we're out of money. Bye. You know who? This, so look, this is like a brand new service coming without any real backing, right? It's, I mean, this is the only thing that they do. They're not, they haven't built it uh, gradually like Netflix. Uh, they're not Disney. They're not uh, Warner Brothers with HBO, right? And these are their competitors, basically. Mm-hmm. How did they expect to actually survive? And a pandemic came and even, and I'm not even sure that that's the real excuse, right? No, so, that actually should have helped. No, because they were targeting commuters. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're right. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Hmm. I wonder why people wouldn't be commuting. <laughs> do you know that's who? Strange. Do you know who was among their backers here? The list. Most of the major Hollywood studios, Google, Alibaba. And the Madrone Capital part Partners. I don't know who who they are. Unbelievable. So it sounds like uh, a very nice group of people got stiffed. Two billion. Uh, yeah. 
Two billion dollars. Such as it goes. Yep. Hey, I've been stiffed before. I got clobbered with a company that was people actually poor it was so doing so well at one time they poured their and took all their money out of their pension plans and put it into stock. And then when the stock went to zero, yep. they lost everything. Yep. Thank God I only had a small portion of that. Um, but I'm still still living with that loss of stock. Oh well. Yep. Huh, y'all. All right. Steve, well, did you now Amnon, did you notice Steve from the UK is on is in uh, chat? No, I did not. Yeah, he's he's back. Yes. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. I guess we're not putting the uh and his his puppy is five years old. Remember when he got his dog? Dang. Yeah. Yeah. I need to start posting the link every now and then again. Well, so, Steve, it's great. It's great that you stopped by. I hope you're doing okay. Um, actually, if if Steve wanted to, he could have scrolled back in the Skype chat and find the the link. We're using the same one now. Or maybe he didn't want to. You said you didn't post. Notice that you didn't post. Yeah, post we don't post it because it's the same one. So it's again every oh, week. Okay. It's the same one. Yeah. All right. You, why don't you just offer? We'll call it the Tubin slot on Zoom. That you have a, a window open just for people to stop by. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to do that. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Okay. Just, uh, well, it's that time of day. Anything else anybody wants to bring up? I guess Nick's internet is never got internet. Yeah. Dang. Anything else? Spans? Gal? Nope. All right. Well, thanks, guys. It was great. It was fun. Yes, Steve, just look back. I mean, if you see a, a Zoom, I, 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 it hasn't been long since I stopped posting it, maybe two months. So there should yeah, be. But, and anything. there's nothing going on in the right, chat. Right. There's nothing just, going on. I think so he didn't know that it's the same link. Yeah. That's all. All right. Well, so thanks again, guys. It was fun. And good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Katie and Dana, Dina, Arlet, and Micha. Thank you, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive and update your virus scan. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9, but you can always reach us at computers2know.com. Uh, tonight at 7, I'm sure Nick will do his show one way or another. He may go into the radio station if he doesn't have uh, internet. But at 7, you can uh, listen to Nick at atnshow.com or if you're in Wilmington or on, you, on uh, tune in. Uh, Wilmington Big Talker 106.7 FM and also Nick does a show Tuesday evening at 7 Infection Podcast which is for survival games very interesting even I'm I'm watching it so see you see everybody have a have a safe week You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel 
follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.